Hello, welcome to Steve's Retro Loft. Today I'm going to be asking the question, what is retro? We know this is. What about this? So what is this mystery gadget? Well, not much mystery about it really. It's a Hermit Retro uh, is the company I bought the kit from and it's a Raspberry Pi based uh, Spectrum emulator running Fuse. The actual kit will drop into any standard Sinclair Spectrum case. I didn't have one spare so I just picked up this uh, one from the Spectrum 40 event in Bescott earlier in, this year, in the year. Uh, As you can see, uh, the kit, although completely different to the original Spectrum, harks back to Sinclair's early days where self-assembly was all part of the deal. Um, I actually do quite like a kit and uh, so it's a bit of a challenge. The one area where I thought I might struggle was the SD card. Um, the SD card is actually surface mounted as long, uh, along with a small capacitor. Um, as you can see on the uh, close up of the SD card slot is in the centre of the screen and the uh, capacitor C1 is just below it a little bit. Um, the actual technique um, for soldering this is something called drag soldering. Um, but what I did at first was uh, um, using a little bit of blue tack and uh, lining up the SD card slot. I just soldered the, the sort of end pieces in just to keep it in place. Uh, so making the, the drag soldering a bit easier. Um, the idea is, uh, it's, it is what it, it, it sounds like, the description is quite accurate. You just uh, put a bit of uh, solder on the tip and then drag the tip along the edges. Um, and it worked. Um, did it a couple of times just to make sure. Uh, but because of I think was it capillary reaction, the uh, solder uh, sticks to the correct places, uh, and uh, yeah, there wasn't any uh, sort of joined tracks. Um, yeah, it's just, just quite, quite an interesting thing to work on. You can see the uh, scale I'm working at. Obviously, the zero to ten are actually millimeter intervals. So yeah, it was a uh, small, but uh, it turned out quite well, which I was quite pleased with. And um, yeah, it looks reasonably good for me. First attempt. One of the first tasks um, of the assembly of the main board is uh, putting the GPIO header pins onto the Raspberry Pi. Um, 40 or so pins, so yeah, it takes a little bit of time, it's a little bit fiddly, but uh, um, quite easy to do. It uh, would be, it'd be quite handy if I had one of those sort of grabbing hands tools which uh, allowed me to keep it in one place. I do have a um, something for the actual main board, um, but for the Raspberry Pi, being since it's only sort of credit card size, it was a little bit fiddly to use. So maybe that's something to buy next time for the next project. But uh, yeah, it seemed to work quite well with this. Next section um, is to solder this on. Um, goes on there, and this is the uh, USB sort of riser stem, so it actually connects to here on the board, and I believe it then uses the connection to go to that for the USB, extra USB port there. So I will uh, gotta attach a couple of plastic bolts to this first, so I'll do that off camera because it's uh, a little bit tedious and I'll uh, start again. Soldering for this part is a little bit tricky because you've got to leave a bit of a sort of blob of solder on there and sometimes solder doesn't always sit the way you want it to and obviously you've got to make sure you don't create a bridge between the two contacts. Um, but it was yeah, quite straightforward and uh, quite easy to do so uh, yeah it's a trickier, one of the trickier parts done. As you can see from the uh, speed of the footage, it's quite, it's quite tedious and there's quite a lot of resistors to do. Um, but it, again, it's quite easy and the sort of, the clamp I had to hold the main board in um, was useful uh, for this. So it's uh, nice and quick. So uh, yeah, it, rather than sort of cut each pin individually, I sold them all first and then have a mass cutting towards the end. Um, just so I can you know leave lots of carnage and pins everywhere. As promised, next bit up is the uh, putting the Raspberry Pi in, and the instructions is to fit it down so it's flush. Uh, it's quite a flexible board, actually. This is so, uh, so I just have to adjust it slightly. Okay, so hopefully that looks okay. I shall start to uh, solder it in. So it looks flush already, so uh, no need to mess around too much. I'll just attach the uh, USB header first. As you can see, it's a little bit tedious uh, soldering another 40 pins in, but it uh, needs to be done, um, hence why I've uh, sped this clip up. Uh, the next uh, bit you'll see, I've actually, it's a fully assembled um, 
device and it's ready to go uh, just a sort of final visual inspection to make sure it's all okay uh, put in the alignment of the sort of hdmi and joystick port in um obviously if you buy one of these kits the the process is fully explained on the documentation received so uh, it's not as scary as it looks um, if you're handy with a sold nine you should be quite good it should be quite easy to do now it's all built, we can take a side-by-side -side comparison of the two devices. There's a 9 volt DC socket in the same place, however the polarity is reversed so don't plug in an original Spain Clare uh, adapter because you'll cause problems. Now the obvious uh, exclusion is the lack of an uh, interface uh, edge connector, so um, you the original adapters won't work. However, you do have a joystick port, HDMI and the secondary SD card slot here which you use for games. Now, the first port in where the microphone socket would be is actually an interface for future uh, devices. The little button in the earphone socket is the fuse menu, and where the TV modulator would normally be, you have a USB uh, port for uh, an extra a memory stick if you want to plug some games in that way. Now, we've had a quick look at the ports and what it can do and what it can't do. Let's have a look at the thing booting up in action. Do excuse the uh, sound of the rain outside, as typical. Uh, it's been dry from, for months and months and months, and as soon as I start doing a video, it rains again. Okay, yeah, it's a lot longer than a normal Sinclair Spectrum, but the Raspberry Pi has to boot, then you have to start up the Fuse emulation software, and there you go. But once you're in, you're in, uh, and it behaves like a normal Sinclair Spectrum. Obviously, loading games is different. You go into Fuse menu, you open, <clears throat> go to the secondary SD card, that's one of the advantages with this kit, and you can select games. What I've done, I've sorted them out into alphabetical order, and I need to delete the untitled folder. So let's have a look at P. Um, yep, there's a pentagram, something called Psyche, something called Pharaoh, and uh, Petsky Robot. Um, let's not take a quick look at that. So. Go to one of the all-time favourites, Jetpack, and the game's loaded. Now, the advantage of uh, having a built-in joystick port, uh, yeah, it means I don't have, to have an additional interface connected to it. So, select four, and you can have a quick look and see how rubbish I am at the game. I'll speed up the uh, gameplay on this section because at the end of the day, it's uh, not really about how the games look or how they play because they play exactly the same. Um, I'm just showing you the Fuse operating system and the hardware. So there you go, that's a quick look at Jetpack. <clears throat> so, if you want to move on to something else, just hit the uh, boot menu and go back. Now what I've done, I've installed some uh, utilities on here <clears throat> and I shall fire up the Zeus browser. So actually I need to reset it first. <laughs> My mistake. There you go. Because I had Zeus uh, as loaded up um, as a selecting, it automatically picks it up. So but what I do want to do is I want to actually load um, a source file I worked on. So with the Zeus uh, assembler I now need to quit and then load quote unquote code and it's already loaded and then print user 57344 to go back into it O to original this brings back um, this <coughs> brings back the code L to list it yeah there we go A to assemble it and X to execute it it's a quick simple machine code uh, oops routine to oops list to change the wallpaper so I'm messing around with machine code, so uh, um, which is always a, a bit of fun. So now go back to assemble again. Looks a bit messy on the screen, but <clears throat> it does work. List oh, execute, and there, there we go. So that's a, a quick look. Um, so the good thing about it is that you can. There's, there's a number of different. Um, things you can do with the OS. Obviously you can stick stuff on the nut, you can look at a, a, a plug-in USB. Yeah, I've still got the optional um, ZX uh, DBFS. Uh, I haven't explored that yet, it's something I probably will need to look at at some point. And obviously the um, <coughs> built-in card. 
Uh, what I have found is if I go to the unsorted folder, when the file's in there, it does seem to take a while to uh, load up. So, uh, oh, go a bit of death. Death chase. Actually, what I do, I'll cl uh, close that because it uh, <coughs> can be quite annoying. <coughs> and he said there's that bit of a pause when you, when you go back to the folder with lots and lots of uh, information in, it seems to take a lot longer. Um, <coughs> if you go to, if you sort of know what you're looking for, uh, and you go for the sorted folder, oops, should be a bit easier. You can say this one opens straight away. Um, yeah. <coughs> This keyboard is a little bit oversensitive sometimes, so. I'm not sure what Elite's doing. Uh, if I paused it or whether I've broken it. <clears throat> Let's try something else. Probably Harry Attack, yeah. Can't remember what the instructions are for that. But there you go, that's the, a quick look at the uh, <coughs> Hermit Retro Spectrum. As I said, there's a, it's great for just a quick blast of games. Um, I don't have to mess around. Uh, I don't have to, you know, try and find a tape that actually loads. Um, as long as I've got a snap file or I uh, think one of the TSX files, whatever they are, uh, or even a Z80 file, they seem to load. Um, but yeah, it's it's good. It, it's, as I said, mentioned a bit previously, the keyboard is a little bit fiddlier. Um, you know, I, I, I think this would be better in an original case. Now, difference with being here, this nice soft rubber is 40 years old, uh, as this sort of key mat is relatively new. Um, maybe in time, it'll sort of go a little bit more flexible than that. Um, and I think I've possibly assembled the case a little bit incorrectly. Um, th this mat didn't quite fit into this case properly, so I did some bit of trimming, um, and then I had to sort of glue this top piece down because it didn't quite fit. Um, that might be me. Um, a number of people have got these sort of various different kits out there, uh, <clears throat> these cases, and they seem to be okay with them. Um, I just, yeah, I just uh, maybe a bit fussy and uh, <laughs> got it wrong because I, I like to do things my way rather than read the instructions as everybody knows but there you go that was a, a quick look at the uh, hermit retro uh, spectrum and so there are a number of different projects out there you can use um what i liked about this one was i met alistair uh, at the, the spectrum 40 event at bescott uh, earlier this year and he seemed a nice bloke and i asked him about it and he explained it and it seemed a good fit, good deal um in fact it also you know runs with raspberry pi uh, and I happen to have a few spares because you know that's what happens when you work in IT. You just collect these things. Uh, but it's been good. Um, obviously, it's, obviously, it's not going to replace the original Spectrum because I, I will sometimes need to test hardware. Um, you know, and it's nice to sometimes load original games as well. Um, but obviously, there, there are some various different things you can do on this uh, which I haven't worked out yet. Um, I was messing around with the Zeus Assembler earlier, as you saw. Um, what the problem I have with that at the moment is I don't seem to be able to save anything. I can save it into the local buffer of, of, of the system and load it back in from the local buffer, but I don't know how you can save it to a tap file. Um, the, the instructions uh, for Fuse in general just seem to be um, a bit vague uh, for me. Uh, <coughs> It would be nice if there was a nice um, manual to go with it. Maybe it is, maybe I've not found it yet. Um, I, I know um, Alice Hermit Retro, I think he's working on some enhancements to the OS, so he might be able to save and do stuff in the future, but it's something else I'll speak to him about. Uh, but I say it's been a good project to work on. But before I go, let's have a quick look at Fuse. To activate the Fuse menu, you press the button at the back, and you see the options are controlled by the cursor keys. Open is obviously simple, um, it's where the media is. Here we go back. It automatically, it should, the way this is configured, open to the uh, this mount points <coughs> in this particular directory. Uh, and you can select the SD, USB, or the ZS, DB, FS directory. Okay, backlight options. That's, how I believe, if you've got a backlight option keyboard, um, you can actually uh, set this up to have an optional uh, sort of backlit LED keyboard. Options, yeah, emulation speed, uh, media, you can set various different things on here with the tape, um, accelerated loaders, and you can actually set it to auto load the media. 
Um, I've not I've got that turned off because sometimes I want to be able to control what I want to load from the uh, uh, yeah for the main um, Sinclair screen. Joysticks uh, again. This is uh, you can set the various joysticks. I've got it set to Kempston because that seems to be the most common one. Um, button mapping um, again. This is yeah. Just, just some other options, and I've not messed around with some of these just yet. And filter, uh, what I've got uh, because of this screen, I've got it set to this uh, size. Um, I think if you alter this, it just alters it, it just adjusts it slightly. Um, so if I go back to filter, I go back to triple size. It just it just do the clarity of the screen. So there you go. Also, one of the advantages you've got with Fuse is you can select various different spectrum modes, and you see I can run a 1 to 8 and then in that case once I've got a 1 to 8 running I can run 1 to 8 compatible games such as uh, Star Glider if I can find it Oops. as I said before the, the keyboard is a little bit sensitive on this Yeah, you can see the uh, game's loaded, and if I keep quiet, you'll hear that the the Pi is actually uh, emulating a, a one to eight spectrum with a sound with a one to eight spectrum sound chip. Let's go back into the menus and let's uh, have a look at some other settings. Oops. In the I'll turn back to being a 48k spectrum because that's uh, where I like things to be. And the, the various different things as a poke finder, memory finder, memory browser. Um, yeah, something to maybe dabble around with when I start to look at a bit more machine code and things like that, so which is always quite handy. Um, so if I then look at the help files. Um, yeah, quite handy if you don't know what the keyboard looks like if you use it in a different case. And about, obviously, it just tells you the copyright of uh, this current version. Um, as I say, the few sounds of free, free Unix Spectrum emulator. It's uh, available on a number of platforms, uh, mainly Unix, but also Windows, which uh, isn't Unix. So uh, there you go. But that was a quick look at the Fuse menus. As you can see, it's quite simple, quite simple uh, layout, and it's quite flexible. I say it, this may vary depends on uh, what version of Fuse you download. Obviously, this one has been sort of customised by Hermit Retro um, to get yeah, to work for how they want it to work. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's all there, and it's uh, good fun. Um, and as I said, it's uh, it's nice to have options to mess around with. That's, uh, that's it for this uh, episode. Um, thank you for joining me for a quick look at the uh, the uh, Hermit Retro Spectrum uh, emulator. Um, I say it's a good little bit of kit. Uh, one or two reservations I've got about the way I think Fuse operates and whether I can save directly to it. Um, I, I, I'm going to be dabbling with some machine code at some point in the future. Uh, and that's why I had a quick look at the uh, Fuse emulator. <coughs> Uh, fuse uh, assembler, sorry, um, and the the file I created on which I loaded onto this Spectrum was um, uh, a tap file which I set up using a uh, an emulation on my Mac. Um, so if I can't save on this, it's not the end of the world because I can still use my Mac to emulate it at this moment in time. Um, but there you go. Thanks for watching. Um, and yeah, it's been a nice quick look at this uh, this kit and it's been a great kit to assemble um, and mess around with. And to say it will give my original Spectrums a bit more life because it means I'm not using these all the time if I want a quick blast or something. Um, but there you go. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Bye bye.